Eldridge McMillan was the first African American to lead the Southern Education Foundation and also the first black educator to, to chair the Georgia Board of Regents. Please watch the screens to see more about the amazing contributions this man has made in his lifetime. Nationally recognized as a leader in education, Dr. Elleridge W. McMillan has significantly impacted the field of higher learning, particularly in the areas of access and equity in the Southeast region. He has had a greater impact upon higher education uh, than any other figure in the history of higher ed uh, in Georgia. There's no question uh, about that. Uh, he helped to put in place the existing structure and uh, he has impacted so many individuals. McMillan uses his more than 40 years of experience to challenge fellow educators and activists to persist in the struggle to improve educational opportunity for America's ever-changing diverse population. In 1967, Dr. McMillan became the first African American to serve as chief of the education branch of the Office for Civil Rights of the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. It was national news and it had national impact because it was pretty much a signal to the rest of us that the South would begin to engineer some change. Eldridge, early on, as you might imagine, when he first got on the board of, of Regents, dealt with a lot of the desegregation issues. He came on board in 75, so you can imagine the tone and tenor upon his, you know, entering into this austere governing body of the state's, you know, best and brightest civic leaders and business leaders, et cetera. And he's a voice for the African-American student who is demanding access. He has tied the issues of education to all the political issues of the various eras in which he has worked and made it very, very clear to very many people that in fact the education of the South, particularly for those who are members of minority groups, was in fact critical to the future of the nation as a whole. And he drove that point through many venues over many, many years to the point where that understanding became a part of the consciousness of the nation going forward. He was also the first African American to lead the Southern Education Foundation and the first African American to chair Georgia's Board of Regents. For someone to have served in the capacities that he has served for the time period that he served, particularly his time as a member of the University System of Georgia Board of Regents, the longest serving board member and its first African American board member. Elders McMillan has been relentless in the pursuit of opportunity for African Americans and relentless in his pursuit of opportunities for the growth and expansion of the university system. McMillan has, has been center stage for all that has happened here and uh, we're all blessed by uh, what he has done and what he continues to do. The state of Georgia, if you can really begin to look at the progress that we've made in the state, I mean, we were at the bottom. And to have made the movement and the progress that we've, we've made to making Georgia one of the most attractive states academically, and Elwich having played such an important, such a massive role in that, uh, having seen it, literally seen it from the, its worst of times, and carried it and nurtured it through the best of times. Yeah, he deserves this award. I'm very, very pleased that uh, Elders McMillan has been uh, put into the ranks of the men of influence. This is a guy who really and truly deserves this recognition. And I am very, very happy that the ABL selected him uh, as one of its honorees this year. You couldn't make a wiser decision. Congratulations, Dr. McMillan. Atlanta Business League is proud to induct Dr. Elridge McMillan into the 2013 Legends Hall of Fame. Oh. 
Well, you see, I came ready. Um, someone told me that we had one minute to um, make a response. And of course, my response to that was telling me to take a minute to do anything would be like telling Moses to come down off of Mount Sinai with three commandments. <laughs> it won't happen. Um, but what I really did, I came and I had this long 15 minute speech that I was gonna make, but um, after I saw all the other things that were going on, I took my pen out and scribbled off something. I learned long ago that a preacher's son doesn't get up before a microphone. I've never seen a microphone that I was afraid of, and um, you might talk too long. So what I did is just scribble something out that I'm going to stick to and sit down, because I'm the last thing on the program, which means that you're ready to go, I'm sure. <clears throat> but since I am so appreciative of the Atlanta Business League and its associates for including me among such an illustrious group of honorees, I'm going to spare you the pain of having to listen to this long speech that I wrote and simply say thank you um, and thank you to all of those who s embellished my meager contribution so generously. Um, <clears throat> I had to pinch myself because I didn't know that I had done some of that. And, I, and, and really while I'm up here, I know it's always dangerous to single out people or call names when you're in a public gathering because invariably one will forget someone and one will make that mistake. Well, I'm gonna throw caution to the wind because there's one person in this room that I should certainly um, say something about and I'm going to, and that's Dr. Gary Magaha, who's the president of the um, Atlanta Metropolitan State College uh, for allowing me space and place in his administration to continue doing what I enjoy doing most. I was thinking the other day, because I've got a birthday coming up soon, that I have been working for 60 years. I have not stopped, it's at, I mean, I left one job it's, um, with the, what well, I won't call it a job, I left um, my position at the Southern Education Foundation. Some people said I never did work, so I guess maybe <laughs> it wasn't work. But I left that and went straight to Atlanta Metropolitan State College and, and I got to thinking, I've never really had a vacation because my work and my vocation and my avocation have intersected throughout my life and I don't think that when one does what one is supposed to do, one necessarily needs to get awards like this. And so um, I feel always a little bit guilty in accepting awards because here again, uh, any award that anybody gets, whether they admit it or not, belongs to a whole lot of folks and rarely ever does it just belong to the person. I've never forgotten that and heaven forbid that I do. So again, thanks for all the kind things and thanks for the induction and I plan to be around for a while longer and when Dr. McGaha gets tired of me, I'll find something else to do. <laughs> Thank you.